Okay. I think if I want to start trying to build a sense of community within this channel, it'd be good for you all to get to know me a little bit better. I think you'd feel a little bit more connected to my videos that way. So that's why I'm doing this Q&A. I asked you all for some questions over on Instagram and YouTube. So I'm going to take some time to answer some of those questions for you all today. I'm probably going to run out of light very soon. Uh, if I do, I'm just going to move inside. And also, I'm not going to be reading out the names or the usernames because I already know I'm going to butcher most of them. But thank you to every single one of you who submitted. Do you have any upcoming travel plans? I'm glad someone decided to ask this. I'm going to be going traveling to Italy. I'm going to be there for a month starting around September. So expect, hopefully, some videos from that whole experience. Should you invest time learning classic photography rules or will it kill your creativity? I'm probably not the best person to be asking mainly because I feel as though I haven't really taken time to study photography. I've taken time to learn the the basics or the fundamentals which is just you know aperture, uh, ISO, and then after that I kind of just started experimenting on my own. I don't think it necessarily kills your creativity if you decide to invest time learning these rules. I just think once you learn the, the basics, the very basics, then you can then start experimenting on your own, find your own style. Best Fuji camera on a budget? I'd say the Fujifilm X-T3, especially if you're going to be doing um, video. That's without a doubt the best camera you can buy, I think, for the price. Even over the X-T4, just because it does have 10-bit. But if you're mainly going to be doing photography, I'd say an X-C4 or any, any of the X100 series cameras. What editing apps do you use for video editing? I use DaVinci Resolve for all of my editing and all of my color grading. Are you working on any version 2 of the FilmVision PowerGrade? Since I've created that power grade, I've learned so much more and so much that I've added to the power grade. It's just figuring out how I'm going to either update or make it uh, version two. Just figuring all that stuff out, and then you know you you you'll see uh, an update to the film vision, both the LUT and the power grade. Favorite focal length? I think honestly. It'd probably be 40 mil full frame, so 27 APS-C. After using that 27 mil Fuji lens, I just completely fell in love with that focal length. And I also think for video, it's a good all-round focal length because it's still wide, but you still get some of that perspective you would get from like a 50 mil. So, so probably that or 35 mil focal length. I got a lot of questions in regards to my video setup and my vintage lenses that I've been modding. So I'm going to be having a full video dedicated to going over all of that. That will be out soon, so that will take care of all of those video setup questions. How to promote your work and start earning money from your photography. The best way to get your work out there 100% is, I think, starting a YouTube channel. Since I've started this channel, I've gotten so many different opportunities both in the photo and video side and none I w would have never had these opportunities if it wasn't for my YouTube channel so if you are a photographer or freelancer definitely consider starting a YouTube channel I know it's it is hard to I guess break into the space but as long as you're bringing something unique and you're bringing in a certain level of consistency I truly believe just on my experience that you know you'll you'll get results and I know a lot of people struggle with it uh, I've seen people that put in years of work and see little to no growth I think just take that as a push to maybe try something different or trying to just bring something new to the creative space as soon as people see something new and fresh they're gonna want to keep watching your videos if you can rewatch a movie again for the first time, which one would you choose? My favorite genre of movies is sci-fi, and my dog's trying, so I'm gonna bring him out really quick. So yeah, my favorite genre is sci-fi, and my favorite all-time movie would probably have to be between 
Arrival and Interstellar. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd rewatch Interstellar um, for the first time again. Okay, we're running out of light pretty quick, so I'm gonna go figure out a lighting setup inside. A lot of the questions that I received were in regards to film school and if I went to film school or what route did I take in college. So I'm basically going to give you just a whole rundown of my background and how I ended up here and hopefully that'll knock out pretty much all of the questions that you had in relation to pretty much everything. So this is going to be a pretty long response. When I was a child, I was never at all interested in anything creative or anything art related. I was honestly really bad at drawing, at painting, pretty much anything that required some sense of creativity, I was really bad at. And my first real exposure to something creative was in high school. I joined a video productions class and in that class we got an introduction to basically everything, you know, editing, filming, photographing, graphic design, and honestly that's where I learned a lot of the foundational skills that have basically transferred over all these years and I guess have allowed me to get to where I'm at now. But bear in mind, I didn't take this class very seriously. My teacher will tell you that I, I wasn't the best student, but I did absorb a lot of information and I'm grateful for that experience. Even though I did learn a lot from that class, it was never enough to push me into actually pursuing the arts. So when it came to university, I decided to study computer science and that was for a couple different reasons. One being that was the only place where I felt I was relatively good at or well informed on. It was just knowing the back end and how computers work, I guess. So there was that and also I wanted to have some financial security when I got older because I feel like that's what we're always told by family, friends, go for a high paying job. So I went into university studying computer science and midway through I'd say about sophomore year I quickly realized that this just wasn't what I wanted to do. Especially right out of college I didn't want to lock myself into a job like that, especially if I knew I wasn't going to be happy. And also around that same time, I got a job at university as a secretarial assistant, and they were also looking for a graphic designer slash photographer. And since I had some background in it because of my high school video productions class, I figured I could do it, and I did. So for the next couple years, I was the graphic designer slash photographer slash videographer for an organization at my university. And this is really where my love for photography started to grow. And I still wasn't taking it very serious. It was my job, but it was something that I found very simple and it was just something I was doing to make some money while at college. And as I started researching and trying to get better at it, Film photography inevitably came up on YouTube and I started getting more and more interested in that. So I picked up a Pentax K1000 and I used that for a good year, I'd say. And it was never anything serious. Again, it was just messing around. I shot a lot of blank rolls. I underexposed a lot of shots. It was a really good learning experience. But then I decided to invest in an actual high-end or professional digital camera in hopes it would level me up and I'd be able to take on more photography jobs. So I picked up an icon and I was using it at work and I was also starting to get into portrait photography but never anything serious it was just mainly taking portraits of friends and I travel with the camera and it was fun but slowly I, I feel like my love for photography started dying out. Maybe it was because I didn't feel like I was progressing or something but then I started getting more into video. So I started playing around with video and this is where I spent a lot of time learning and studying, just trying to 
absorb as much information on the video side of things because for me there was something different about that medium it was in my opinion a bit more impactful um, videos would just have more of an impact on me and now when I would travel it was no longer about taking photos it was about taking videos and as I started learning more and more about video I started making these little films whether I'd be traveling or just kind of filming at home and it, it was never to post anywhere I did post on my Instagram account of like 300 followers but it was mainly just you know having fun and creating for me it was never using it to gain a following or anything and it was a time of just learning and experimenting and I think a lot of I guess the style that I have now started developing there and so the more time that I started investing in learning video is when I wanted to then take that a little bit more serious and when I say serious I don't mean trying to make money off of it just leveling up my skills I guess so I sold off my Nikon and I ended up buying the original Blackmagic pocket cinema camera so fast forward to the last year at university I I mean it came down to the point where I had to start looking at jobs or had to decide what I'm gonna be doing once I graduate and since I already knew that I I didn't want a job with my computer science degree I had to start looking at other options and a lot of things came to mind you know starting uh, a business dropshipping and YouTube because YouTube I guess I wouldn't say it's always been a dream but it was always in the back of my mind like hey YouTube this would be pretty cool I thought it would be a Minecraft YouTube channel that I would be um, pursuing but getting closer to graduating I decided to start a YouTube channel but my plan was to do fashion slash lifestyle videos so the first couple of videos that I made on this channel are fashion related or vloggy but not very vloggy if I were to um, make them public you'll still see my style shine through them but it's it was just my intention wasn't to make a photography channel so I made a couple of videos in regards to that and while they were fun to make, it was mainly the editing and the filming that I loved. It wasn't the content that I was creating necessarily. So long term, you know, I had to figure out what, what it was that I was going to start creating content on. And during this time, I also started getting a lot of street photography videos on YouTube. And a little bit before that, I ended up buying the X-T4 because I wanted a hybrid um, that would do both photo and video. So I had an X-T4 and I had experimented with street photography once or twice, like after going to a grocery store, just going outside and taking photos. But I decided to try it. And that first video on my channel is my first real go at street photography. And I had a lot of fun. And I told myself, this is what I'm gonna pursue. It wasn't, it was no longer fashion lifestyle related. It was photography. I just started making videos on it, on Fujifilm cameras, on photography. And little by little, I think I started finding my groove and really figuring out what type of content I wanted to be creating. And here we are now. But yeah, that was my background. I know the original question had to do with film school, which I didn't touch on at all. And I obviously, I didn't go to film school. I do think film school is good for two things the first one being the connections that you'll make so those students that you're going through school with those are going to be the people that are going to be bringing you on to jobs in the future and those types of connections are pretty invaluable that's the main benefit i see with film school and second being that you get hand-on experience with different cameras and equipment that you wouldn't normally have access to with that being said you don't need film school to get into that space. That was a very long response, but hopefully that covers a lot of the questions on my background. What do you think your highest career goal is? I think the, the thing that I dream of the most is creating a feature film and renting out a theater and inviting family and friends and subscribers to watch. What inspired you to become a content creator? 
honestly as bad as it may sound i think desperation was one of the main uh, reasons for at least trying to become a content creator just trying to find an alternative to a typical nine to five job and trying to work for myself it just seemed a good way to eventually reach financial freedom while being able to work on your own time how do you deal with inevitably comparing yourself to other photographers the main thing i do to stay away from i guess just comparison in general is honestly just limiting my time on social media it's funny because i'm i'm trying to make my livelihood you know off of youtube and i guess off of sharing my work on instagram but i don't feel like i need to be on it every single hour of every day you know it's it's okay to find a balance what is the biggest influence for creating anything i think when i think about my why when it comes to just creating art in general one have fun with it but two is to just try and invoke emotion in within a person that's viewing my my work have you tried using Capture One for editing? Would love to use your presets with Capture One. Actually, I think a week ago or two weeks ago, Capture One came out with the app for the iPad. So I honestly, I think I'm going to be switching from Lightroom to Capture One. And I'm going to try and develop my presets or maybe even new presets on Capture One. So we'll see, but I might be switching over to Capture One. Is YouTube and video slash photo work your main source of income at the moment? Luckily, yes, it is. I've gotten to a point where I can pretty much completely rely on my freelance video, photography, color work, plus YouTube and all the different income streams that comes from that, like YouTube ad revenue, Amazon affiliate, my LUTs and presets, brand sponsorships, it all has basically allowed me to sustain myself. And it was around a year ago this time that I left my part-time job and decided to fully pursue my passion for photo and video. And speaking of income streams, one that I've been recently introduced to and who is also the sponsor of this video is Wirestock. Now I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with selling photo and stock video footage and maybe you know artists who are making a good amount of money from it. If you've sold stock photo or video in the past, you know how tedious of a process it can be, especially if you're uploading to multiple sites, and essentially Wirestock takes care of that for you. So they'll take your files and upload it to each stock footage website. So all you have to do is upload it once. And they'll also take care of the tags and description, which also takes a very long time, and they'll take care of all of that. Wirestock does take a small percentage of your earnings, but I think it's worth it for the extra heavy lifting that they're doing to get your files uploaded to multiple different sites. It's also completely free to sign up, so feel free to click the link in the description to give it a try. And the reason I decided to take this sponsorship and share it with you all is because I am also trying to get into stock footage and has, have started experimenting with Wirestock. So if you have any questions in regards to it, feel free to let me know and I'll share my experience with you all. This is a question off of YouTube and it's how do you feel about your videos when you are done editing and uploading them? Does it take you a while to distance yourself and to appreciate them after seeing them so much on the edit? Yes, those are exactly my sentiments when it comes to my videos. It takes me a couple weeks or months till I rewatch the video to fully appreciate it and to feel proud of the work I've created. And also when I'm feeling a bit uninspired and need some motivation, I'll go back and watch my old videos just because, I don't know, sometimes I forget what I can create or what I'm capable of, I guess. I also see a lot of questions in regards to cinematography and I guess any tips or how I go about cinematography and I've thought about making a video basically on how I compose and light but I'm still learning so I don't know if I want to make a video when I'm still learning myself you know I'm, I'm still trying to figure things out so I have thought about making a patreon basically where I share everything that I've learned 
with photography, with video, with color grading, where I'd essentially just drop small videos with any tips that I can give because I don't know how likely I am to make full on YouTube videos when it comes to tips like that, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm still, I still have a lot of ideas that are flowing around, but Patreon is definitely one of those ideas where people who have questions about my, I guess my cinematography or how I go about composition, that'd be a good place where I'd share my tips. Stick to your style filmic when shooting for someone or just give them what they want. Typically, if I have a job to do for somebody, they've reached out to me because they like my style. So usually when I work, when I have a job for someone, they already like my style. So I usually don't have to compromise too much, but obviously it depends on uh, the type of job too. You know, if it's a short film, more likely to be able to go for that filmic look compared to a corporate commercial. How do you find niche or unique non-mainstream inspiration? Probably just maybe honestly staying away from too much social media. I think when you're loaded constantly with just so much information and a lot of the same things, it kind of places your creativity into sort of a box, I think. And when you're out of touch with that is when you're more likely to be more creative. At least that's what I think, but obviously it's good to take inspiration from others and other work, bodies of work, but creativity is gonna ultimately come down to you. Advice for having contentment with gear and making the most of what you have. This is something that I've struggled with becoming a content creator is that I feel like we make a lot of you think that you need the highest level of gear to create something good when in reality you really don't it really comes down to you your creativity your story and your talent you know i'm at a point where i can purchase the newest and latest gear and if i think it's going to level up my production value then i'm going to do it but if you don't you shouldn't feel bad about having to use old gear yeah you should never feel like you can't create something because you don't have the most expensive and latest gear. What gear did you first start out with? Any pictures from your noob days you could show us? So I kind of already went through what gear I started out with. Um, Nikon, uh, Nikon um, Pentax K1000, original Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. That's pretty much the gear that got me into both photo and video. I, I'm sure I could pull up some photos to show you, but I think what I'm going to end off the video with is showing you one of the first videos that I made with, or actually the first video that I made, and it was actually with the Nikon, it wasn't even with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. This was right when I was learning everything, and I wasn't using the, create, the, the right uh, shutter speed in the video, I didn't know anything about ND filters, but one thing that I I felt I was already starting to learn was how to compose. So this work, which is from a trip to Hawaii, is honestly one of my favorite pieces of art that I've ever created. I think it'd be a nice way to end this Q&A off and hopefully it inspires you, especially those who think you need um, or feel as though the gear you have isn't enough. This was all shot with a Nikon D 5500 I think um, just the standard 50 mil kit lens and great in DaVinci Resolve with just the free version of DaVinci Resolve so again thank you every single one of you who submitted a question and for any support that you've shown me I'm really excited for what's to come on this channel I definitely have a lot of videos that are coming and a series that I'm going to be starting more i'm um, you, you'll see it i'll be work i'll start working on that very soon and yeah i want to find a nice balance between making videos that are more i guess storyline based or more high production value and mixing those in with other small videos with something like a q a or just videos that don't require that much planning 
and just finding a nice balance between the two. That way you have videos to watch on a more regular basis. Enjoy this little film. It's probably going to look like crap because it is 1080p and I don't have the original files to upscale to 4K. Hopefully you get the gist of it and can still enjoy it. So I'll see you all in my next video.